what is the hardest problem, puzzle, idea in computer science for you personally that you had to work through? Just something that was just a, a the hardest thing that I've ever been involved with. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that's I don't know how to answer questions like that, but in this case, uh, it's pretty clear. <laughs> uh, okay. Because it, it's uh, called the the birth of the giant component. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now let me explain that because this is actually gets gets into physics too, mm. and it gets into something called Bose-Einstein statistics. But but uh, but but anyway, it's got some interesting stories and it connected with Berkeley again. Um, so start with the idea of a random graph. Now this is, did, did, here we, we just say we have n points that are totally unconnected and and there's no geometry involved. There's no saying some points are further apart than others. All points are exactly, are exactly alike and let's say we have 100 points and, and, and we number them from zero, zero to nine, nine, mm -hmm. all right? Now let's let's take pi, uh, the digits of pi, so two at a time. So, so we had 31, 41, 59, 26. We, we, we can look, go, go through pi. Mm -hmm. And so, when, so, so we take the first two, 31, 41, and let's, let's put a connection between Point thirty-one and point forty-one. Mm -hmm. That's an edge in the graph. So, so th then we take f f five, nine, two, six, and make another edge, and, and, and the graph gets bigger, get, gets more and more connected mm -hmm. as we add these things one, uh, one at a time. Okay, mm -hmm. so we start out with endpoints, and and we add uh, m edges. Okay, uh, each edge is completely. We forgot about ed ed edges we had before. We might get an edge twice. We might get an edge from a point to itself even. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe pi is going to have a run of four digits in there. So, so we're going to... But anyway, we're evolving a, a graph at random. Mm -hmm. um, and a magical thing happens when the number of edges is like 0.49n. <laughs> Uh, to, 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 so maybe n is a million, and I have, uh, you know, four hundred ninety thousand edges. Uh, then, it almost all the time, it it consists of isolated trees, mm -hmm. not even any loops. Right. Um, it's a very small number of edges so far. Ha, ha, about a little less than half n. N, right? But if I had 0.51 edges. So a little more than half n. So, so you know, a mil million points, five hundred ten thousand edges. Mm -hmm. Now it probably has a, a a one component that's much bigger than the others, mm -hmm. um, and we call that the giant component. So, okay, can you clear? So can you yeah. clarify? So first of all, is there a name for this kind of random, super cool the, pi random graph? <laughs> it, well, I I call it pi, the pie graph. No, no, I, I, I the pie graph is actually my, my pie graph is based on on binary representation of pi, not the decimal representation of pi. But 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 anyway, let's suppose I was rolling dice instead. Okay. So so, so I might so, have, so it doesn't doesn't have to be pi. Be any, any source of it, 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 the point is every step choose totally at random one of those endpoints, end mm -hmm. choose totally at random another one of the endpoints, mm -hmm. make that an edge. That's the process. Yeah. So there's there's nothing magical about pi. That you were no, just no, us I was example. using pi to, to, I was sort of saying, pi is sort of random that nobody yeah. knows a pattern in. Exactly, um, got it, uh, got it, got uh, it. But it's not, yeah, I could have just as well drawn straws or something. Mm -hmm. um, this was a concept invented by Erdős and Rainey, and they called it the evolution of random graphs. And if you start out with with a large number n, and you and you repeat this process, all of a sudden a big bang happens mm -hmm. at one half n. There'll be two points together. Then maybe we'll have 
have to have three, mm -hmm. uh, and, and then you know, and then, then they maybe branch out a little bit, but but they'll all be separate until we get to one half n, and and we pass one half n, and all of a sudden th there's substance to it. That there are there's a big clump of stuff that's all joined together. So it's almost like a phase transition of some kind. It, it's exactly it. It, it's a phase transition, but it's actually it's a double phase transition. It turns out it it it, it happens. I mean, there's actually two things going on at once at this, at, at this phase transition, which is uh, which is very remarkable about it. Okay, so so um, a lot of the most important algorithms are are based on random processes, and so I wanted to you know I want to understand random processes and how and so, so there are data structures that sort of grow this way. Okay, so so. So, so Dick Carp, one of the leading experts on on random randomized algorithms, had his students working look, looking at this at Berkeley, and we heard a rumor that the students had f found something interesting happening. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the, the, the students are are generating this are simulating this random evolution of, of graphs, mm -hmm. and and they're taking stat, snapshots uh, every so often to take a look at what the graph is. And the rumor was that every time they looked, th there was only one component that had loops in it, almost always. They do a million experiments, and, and, and only three or four times did they ever, ever happen to see a loop at this, at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I mean, m no, more than one component with a loop. So, so, so they watch it until the graph gets completely full. Uh, so, so it starts out totally empty and, and gets more and more more and more edges all the time, uh, and 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 so okay, certainly a loop comes along once, but but now all the loops stay somehow joined to that one. They, they, they're, <laughs> okay. they, they're never there never were two guys with loops. Wow, interesting. Uh, okay, in, in these experiments. Okay, so anyway, this almost always, certainly yeah. not always. Yeah. Uh, but 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 with high with very high probability, this seemed to be true. So. So, so we heard about this rumor at Stanford, and we said, hmm, if, if that's true, then must you know, a lot more must also be true. So there's a whole bunch, there's a whole theory out there waiting to be discovered that we haven't ever thought about. So, so let's take a look at it. And so we looked closer, and we found out no, it, actually, that it, it's not true, but but in fact, it, it's almost true. <laughs> Namely, there's a very short interval of time when it's true. Mm. And if, and if you don't happen to look at it during that short interval of time, then you miss it. So, the, in other words, the, the, there'll be a period where there are two or three components that have loops, but they join together pretty soon. Okay. So, 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 so if you don't have a, a real fast shutter speed you're going to miss you're going to miss that instant so separate loops don't exist for long that's that's it yeah you, you know i started looking at this to make it quantitative and uh basic problem was to slow down the big bang so that i could watch it happening yeah i i, I think i can explain it actually in, in fairly elementary terms mm -hmm. even even without writing a formula let's like, try like hawking would do uh, and 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 so uh let's let's watch the evolution and and, and at first uh these edges are coming along and they're just making things without loops mm -hmm. which, which we call trees okay mm -hmm. so then all of a sudden a loop first appears mm -hmm. so at that point i have one component that has a loop mm -hmm. all right now now i say that the complexity of a component is the number of edges minus the number of vertices. So if I have a loop, I have like a loop of length five, has five edges and five vertices. Mm -hmm. um, or, or I could put a tail on that, and that would be another edge, another vertex. It's like a zero, one, two complexity kind of thing. So, so, so if the if the complexity is zero, we have one one loop I call it a cycle or, or I call it a cyclic component. So, so so a cyclic component looks like a, a a wheel to which you attach fibers mm -hmm. or trees. They go branching, but there's no more loops. There's only one loop and, and everything else feeds into that loop. Okay. And that has complexity zero. 
but but a tree itself has complexity minus one because it has, uh, uh, you know, it, like a, like like it might have ten vertices and, and nine edges to tie the tie them together. So nine minus ten is minus one. So so, so complexity minus one is a tree. Mm -hmm. It's got to be connected. That's what I mean by a component. It's got to be connected. So 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 if if, if I have ten things connected, I have to have nine edges. Can you clarify why yeah. when complexity goes uh, can go above zero? I'm I'm a little confused yeah, so, why. Right. So the complexity plus one is the number of loops. So, so if complexity is zero, I have one loop. If if I, if complexity is one, that means I have one more edge than I have vertex. So, so I might have like eleven edges and ten vertices. Mm -hmm. It's so it turns. We call that a bicycle because it it, it it's got two loops and it. it's got to have two loops in it. If, if you, 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 I, well, I, but why can't it be trees just going off of the loop? That I would need more edges than I. It, oh right, right. Okay, I got. So you. So, so every time I, I get you. another loop, I, I I get another excess of edges over vertices. I got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in other words, uh, I, we start out and. Nice. And after I have one loop, I have one component that has a cycle in it. Mm -hmm. now, now, the the next step, uh, according to the rumor, would be, be that at the next step I would have a, a bicycle after, uh, in in the evolution of almost mm -hmm. all graphs. It would it would go from cycle to bicycle, mm -hmm. but in fact, there's a certain probability it goes from cycle to two, you know. Two different cycles, mm -hmm. all right. Um, and I worked out the probability it was something like five out of twenty-four. It, it, well, there that's was pretty a, high. It, it, it was substantial, you know? yeah. Uh, but still, it, uh, soon they're going to merge together. Almost all. okay. So, so that's so, so cool. But but I, but then it splits again after you have either either two or one one. Uh, it, the next step is you ha either have three or you have two one or you have one one one. Okay. And so I worked out the probability f f for for those transitions, mm -hmm. and I worked it out up to up to the first five transitions, and I had these so I had these strange numbers five twenty four, and I stayed up all night, and about three a.m. I, I I had the numbers computed, and I looked at them, and here were the denominator was something like twenty. Two three zero two three. Mm -hmm. so, so, so the probability was something over two three zero oh, two three. I don't and know how you worked that out, but I had a formula would... that you know, I could calculate the probability. Yeah, and, and and I could find the limiting probability as n goes to infinity, and and it, and it turned out to be this number, but the denominator was two three. And I and I looked at the denominator. and I said, wait a minute, this number factors because. 1001 is equal to 7 times 11 times 13. I had learned that in my first computer program. So 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 so, so, so 23023 yeah. is 7 times 11 times 13 times mm -hmm. 23. Mm -hmm. That's not a random number. There has to be a reason why those mm -hmm. small primes appear in the denominator. Mm -hmm. But my th so all of a sudden that suggested um Another way of looking at the problem, where small prime factors w w w would occur. Mm -hmm. So, so what would that be? So, so that said, oh yeah, let me take the logarithm of this formula, and and sure enough, it's going to simplify, and and it happened. So, and and I wouldn't have noticed it except for this factorization. <laughs> okay, so I go to bed and I I say, oh okay, this is this looks like I'm slowing down the Big Bang. I can figure out what's yeah. going on here. And the next day, it turned out Bill Gates comes to Stanford to visit. Uh, they're, they're trying to sell him on donating money to, to, uh, for, for a new computer science building. Sure. <laughs> and and they, and uh, I, so they gave me an appointment to talk to Bill, and I and I wrote down on the blackboard this <laughs> this evolutionary diagram, you know, going yeah. from one to two, five twenty fourths, and all this business. Yeah. And, and I wrote it down. And anyway, at the end of the day, the uh, he, he was discussing people with the with, with the uh, uh, development office, and and he said, "Boy, I was really impressed with uh, what, what Professor Knuth said uh, 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 about this giant component." Mm -hmm. And and, uh, and so 
uh, you know, I, I, I love this story because it shows that uh, theoretical computer science is, is really worthwhile. You know, so, Does Bill, have you ever it, talked to Bill Gates about it uh, since then? Yeah. <laughs> that's a cool. Yeah. That's a cool little moment in history. That's yeah, cool. but 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 anyway, it, it, he happened to visit on, on exactly the day after I had I, I, I'd found this pattern, and and that allowed me to to crack the problem, so so, yes. you know, so, so that I, I could develop the theory and, and, uh, the, the theory some more and, and understand what's happening in the big. But uh, because I could I could now write down. Explicit formulas for stuff, and, and, and so it would, it would, you know, it would work not only the first few steps, but also the whole, study the whole process. And and I worked further and further, and I, I with two authors, co-authors, and we finally figured out that the probability that the rumor is true. In other words, look at the evolution of a, a, of a random graph going from zero zero to to complete. Mm -hmm. And say, what's the probability that at every point in time there was only one component with a cycle? Mm -hmm. We started with this rumor saying there's only one cycle, there's only one component with a cycle, and, and uh, so be, uh, the rumor the was that it's a hundred percent. The rumor was that it was a hundred percent. It turned out the actual numbers is like eighty-seven percent. Or, or I, I don't, I, I should remember the number, but I don't, but I don't have it with me. But, but anyway. But but the but the number it it turned out to be like twelve over pi squared or so, or, or anyway <laughs> no, or, or, sorry eight over pi anyway it 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 was a nice it related to pi yeah um, and we could never have done that with but so that's the hardest problem I ever solved in my life was to prove that this probability is it, so is, it was proven it, it, the probability I, was proven yeah I, I was able to prove this that this. And 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 this shed shed light on a whole bunch of other things about random graphs, that that was sort of the the major th thing we were after. Oh, well, that's super cool. I uh, what was the connection to physics that you mentioned? Well, Bose-Einstein statistics is is the study of how molecules uh, uh, bond together uh, 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 without geometry, without distance. 